This is Five on Your Side at Five, focused on you. Tonight, we're getting a look at police body cam video and surveillance video showing the moment a Ferguson police officer was injured during a protest. Thanks for joining us. I'm Mike Bush. And I'm Kelly Jackson. Officer Travis Brown has a life-threatening brain injury after a man charged at him outside the police station. It happened Friday night, the day marking 10 years since the death of Michael Brown. Megan Kernan joins us live from the police department tonight with what we've learned today, Megan. Kelly, we know that Travis Brown's condition has not changed. He remains in a coma. The other two officers who were injured are doing OK and are actually back at work now. The first surveillance video that police released shows protesters shake the fence outside the station. As officers start walking over to confront the protesters, body cam footage shows Elijah Gant running across the street. Next, you can see Gant run behind a car. That's when Officer Brown moves around to stop him and Gant tackles him. And you can see the moment Brown falls back and hits his head. We also learned today that new charges have been filed against five people involved in the incident. The main suspect, Elijah Gant, faces another assault charge for kicking another officer in the head. He's already been charged with assault, resisting arrest, and property damage. Meanwhile, Emily Davis was charged with third degree assault. Derek Robinson, Philip March, and Keith Rose were charged with property damage. Ferguson Police Chief Troy Doyle said Gant tackled the officer like a football player. Those of you, and I think you know who you are, that are in leadership roles in this region have talked about, got a lot of face time, talking about the anniversary of this coming up. If you haven't condemned this act or condemned what happened to my officer, then you're part of the problem. Now, Brown has been with the Ferguson Police Department since January. Before that, he was with St. St. Louis County Police for more than 10 years. Now, in just 30 minutes, there's going to be a prayer vigil held outside of the Ferguson Police Station. As you can see, many blue ribbons are placed upon this fence outside of the police station for Officer Brown. We will bring you that coverage tonight at 6 and 10. Live in Ferguson, Megan Kernan, 5 on your side. Tonight we're tracking some rain south of the metro. So let's check in with meteorologist Jim Castillo, Jim. Yeah, you know, most of the day around St. Louis, it stayed cloudy, but very dry. Now those showers were in our southern counties, had a couple of areas of thunderstorms also that stayed below severe limits. Uh, but any, anywhere from Phelps County and then down around Reynolds and Iron County and south of Farmington now, a few light showers remain. We'll zoom in a little bit, Lesterville to about Fredericktown, uh, where we have those lighter showers. Now, uh, the big news that we're talking about is on Thursday, where the Storm Prediction Center has placed us in a level two out of five for that risk of some severe weather, damaging wind, the main threat. So strong storms are possible, and the timing on this looks like early in the morning hours and then again late evening into the overnight. So gusty wind, heavy rain, that lightning, and we just want you to stay aware and get ready for Thursday. It could be an active day. We might have a couple of rounds of storms headed our way. It's 80 right now and cloudy. Much more on our forecast and the weekend outlook coming up. Voters will decide the future of abortion, sports betting, and paid sick leave at the ballot box this November. Today, Missouri Secretary of State Jay Ascroft confirmed the petition drives collected enough valid signatures. Our political editor Mark Maxwell is here with more on how these campaigns are already shaking up a big election year. Yeah, from the time the Supreme Court struck down Rover's Wade until now, seven states have taken up the issue of abortion. Every state saw a jump in voter turnout when that was on the ballot, and Every state voted to expand or protect abortion access so far. We're already seeing the impact of this question spilling over into other big races on the ballot. Take the Missouri governor's race, for example. Democrat Crystal Quaid reacting to today's news in a statement writing, Within 15 minutes of the fall of Roe, extremists like Mike Kehoe cheered as the rights of women all across Missouri were stripped away. In the U.S. Senate race, incumbent Republican Josh Hawley now says the Missouri abortion ban goes beyond his personal preference. And he says voters should get to decide the question, not Congress. It ought to be decided by the voters. It should not be decided by a bunch of politicians in Washington saying, here's our national solution, we're going to jam down your throat. Well, Josh Hawley already wants to override the will of Missouri voters because he has co-sponsored a national abortion ban in the U.S. Senate. 
Also, the guy is not for exceptions. He is on the congressional record specifically saying that he can't wait for the day when we ask ourselves, how could abortion have ever been allowed in our country? We fact-checked that, and indeed, in 2022, Hawley did vote to co-sponsor a national abortion ban just two years ago. Tonight at 6, we press him on how he will vote on this ballot amendment question in November. Tonight, the St. Louis Public School Board will have its first meeting since an audit revealed a $35 million budget deficit. The audit came from an independent consulting firm. It shows inconsistent record-keeping and mismanagement, among other issues. This also comes after Superintendent Dr. Keisha Scarlett was placed on temporary leave. The state auditor is now investigating. The school board meeting starts at 6.30. Tonight we are getting a closer look at teacher pay in Missouri. The Show Me State has some of the lowest paid teachers in the country. The average for the last school year was just below $54,000. In Illinois, it was nearly $74,000. Some Missouri teachers will get a raise next year when a new law takes effect, raising first-year teacher salaries to $40,000. Realistically, when you look across the landscape, there's not an industry hardly that's not hurting for employees. And schools are just the same. And we've got to be able to compete salary-wise to be able to attract the best and the brightest into our classrooms because that's what we need in front of kids. Still not clear whether the extra money is coming from the state or districts. Instead of paying teachers more, some districts are switching to four-day work weeks to recruit and retain teachers. The city of Arnold is working to buy up dozens of homes in several local businesses to build a new road, which is causing frustration and confusion in the community. Arnold Parkway is a newly proposed outer road near I-55 in the Arnold Common Shopping Mall. New tonight, our Annie Crawl was in that neighborhood talking to impacted homeowners and the city about the plans. Arnold Parkway will start at Highway 141 near I-55 and connect with Michigan Avenue to the south. The road will run parallel to the already very busy 55 and end at Richardson Road. The city of Arnold says the proposed price tag for all that construction is $75 million. In a letter obtained by Five on Your Side delivered to homes on Christie Drive, the city has already handed out offers of $177,000 to several homeowners offering up to $225,000. Something 93-year-old Otto Nusspol isn't interested in taking after living here for more than 60 years. This is a home I love. My wife and I love this home. Even if I was offered a million dollars, I, have, I, I don't think I would take it. Brian Richardson, the city of Arnold administrator, says they're trying to be flexible with the homeowners who he says should expect to leave in 2025, offering that if they'd like to sell their house now, though, they can get the buyout money sooner as a financial incentive to start looking for a new place. Even if they would do that soon, we would allow them to stay uh, in the home um, all the way till the end of June 30th if they need for just a dollar a month. Uh, to give them some flexibility, uh, you know, makes them a, a, a more attractive buyer. They don't have a contingency. People who want to voice their concerns about the new road can at the next city council meeting on Thursday night at 7 o'clock. Reporting in Arnold, Annie Crawl, 5 on your side. Preparing for the DNC in Chicago, how the city plans to protect delegates and other visitors. New funding to fight cancer, how the money could improve cancer rates in the U.S. As war escalates in the Middle East, experts are warning about the impact it could have in the U.S.